Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome to Abdominal Sonography Registry Review. Feel free to pause the video after I ask the question, give you enough time to answer it before I answer it. Let's get started. Question one, this type of disease is usually metastatic and is commonly associated with retroperitoneal lymph nodes and the ipsilateral kidney. Based on these characteristics, this ultrasound demonstrates A, adrenal metastasis, B, pheochromocytoma, C, adrenal cyst, or D, adrenal lymphoma. The answer is D, adrenal lymphoma. Question two, this ultrasound represents what? A, renal transplant complication, B, cirrhosis, C, hepatitis, or D, renal obstruction. The answer is A, renal transplant complication. Question number three, what is the most specific finding in acute testicular torsion? A, a small reactive hydrocele. B, thickening of the scrotal wall. C, diminished or absent color flow to the testes. Or D, diffuse enlargement of the testes. The answer is C, diminished or absent color flow to the testes. Question number four, a 26 year old female with a history of glycogen storage disease presents to the emergency room complaining of abdominal pain. The only recent change is she is taking a brand new contraceptive pill. During the visit, the physician discovers she has suffered from a tumor hemorrhage. What is the most likely diagnosis? A, hepatic adenoma, B, focal nodular hyperplasia, C, hepatic lipoma, or D, Hepatocellular carcinoma. The answer is A, hepatic adenoma. Question number five. Which of the following is extremely important when performing an asymptomatic testicular ultrasound? A, color flow Doppler. B, spectral Doppler. C, I'll put power because of Alara, or D, the patient must avoid fluids for at least six hours before the ultrasound. The answer is A, color flow Doppler. Question six, a 33 year old female is scheduled to have a thyroid ultrasound after noticing a lump in her neck. Based on the sonographic appearance alone, what is the most likely diagnosis? A, thyroid metastasis. B, benign thyroid nodules. C, anaplastic carcinoma. Or D, thyroid lymphoma. One of the tricks of taking these tests is remembering to watch the entire video before you answer your question, because sometimes the answer won't be available till the, at the end of the video. So make sure you don't cut the video short because you might miss key information to help you answer your question. The answer to this question is B, benign thyroid nodules. Question seven. Which of the following is the best way to examine a tips with ultrasound? A, the patient is usually supine, although a slight right lateral decubitus position may improve visualization. B, the patient is usually prone, although a slight left lateral decubitus position may improve visualization. C, the patient is usually prone, although a slight right lateral decubitus position may improve visualization. Or D, the patient is usually supine, although a slight left lateral decubitus position may improve visualization. The answer is D. The patient is usually supine, 
although a slight left lateral decubitus position may improve visualization. Question A. This type of liver condition represents which of the following sonographically? A. Decreased echogenicity with decreased acoustic penetration. B. Increased echogenicity with increased acoustic penetration. C. Increased echogenicity with decreased acoustic penetration. Or D. Decreased echogenicity with increased acoustic penetration. The answer is C, increased echogenicity with decreased acoustic penetration. Question number nine, which of the following is the best way to scan the liver? A, have the patient position both arms to the side with fingers pointed towards their feet to draw the rib cage downward, place the patient in the supine position with the slight right anterior oblique position and have him or her take a deep breath and hold it to expand the abdomen B, have the patient raise the left arm above the head to draw the rib cage upward, place the patient in the prone position with a slight right anterior oblique position, and have him or her take a deep breath and hold it to expand the abdomen. C, have the patient raise the right arm above the head to draw the rib cage upward, place the patient in the supine position, and have him or her take a deep breath and hold it to expand the abdomen. Or D, have the patient position both arms to the side with fingers pointed towards their feet to draw the rib cage downward, place the patient in a prone position with a slight left anterior oblique position and have him or her blow out all their breath and hold it to decrease abdominal pressure. The answer is C. Have the patient raise the arm above the head to draw the rib cage upward, place the patient in the supine position and have him or her take a deep breath and hold it to expand the abdomen. Question 10, which of the following is true regarding this ultrasound? A, these findings demonstrate noticeable posterior attenuation. B, tend to decrease in size, but increase in quantity during pregnancy. C, these findings are hyperechoic within fatty infiltrated livers. Or D, contrast enhanced imaging demonstrates centripetal flow. The answer is D, contrast enhanced imaging demonstrates centripetal flow. So in this ultrasound, this liver demonstrates a small hemangioma. Usually these type of findings, these type of benign tumors will show acoustic enhancement in the posterior region and they tend to increase in size during pregnancy. And hemangiomas are typically hypoechoic in fatty infiltrated livers. Question 11, a patient with advanced chronic mesenteric ischemia is most likely to be what? A, obese, B, malnourished, C, hyperactive, or D, have a history of Crohn's disease? The answer is B, malnourished. Question 12, click on the correct area most affected by Beckwith-Weidman syndrome. So which organ or area in this image is most affected by Beckwith-Weidman syndrome? The answer is right here, the liver. Beckwith-Weidman syndrome will cause hepatomegaly. Question 13, which of the following laboratory tests would be most sensitive to help confirm the diagnosis of this patient? A, international normalized ratio. B, serum albumin test. C, Cassoni skin test. Or D, alpha fetoprotein test. The answer is C, Cassoni skin test. Question 14. The IVC is created by the union of the two, A, common iliac arteries, 
B, common femoral veins, C, common iliac veins, or D, common femoral arteries? The answer is C, common iliac veins. Question 15, which of the following compresses the ventral aspect of the celiac axis in patients with celiac artery compression syndrome? A, right iliac artery, B, superior mesenteric artery and the aorta, C, median arcuate ligament, or D, the aorta and the vertebral column? The answer is C, median arcuate ligament. Question 16. This ultrasound was evaluated on a patient who has celiac artery compression syndrome. Which of the following below correctly states what was occurring during this color Doppler analysis? A, the Doppler was recorded on expiration. B, the Doppler was recorded during calm breathing. C, the Doppler was recorded on inspiration. Or D, the Doppler was recorded during the Vassalva maneuver. The answer is C, the Doppler was recorded on inspiration. Question 17, this condition is an inflammation caused by an increased capillary permeability as a result of a pulmonary embolism. What condition is this? A, ascites, B, rectus sheath hematoma, C, transudative effusion, or D, exudative effusion. The answer is D, exudative effusion. Question 18, which of the following best describes anterior nutcracker syndrome? A, compression of the popliteal artery by surrounding tissue, B, compression of the left iliac vein by the right iliac artery and the vertebral column. C, compression of the retroaortic left renal vein between the aorta and the vertebral column. Or D, left renal vein is compressed between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. The answer is D, left renal vein is compressed between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. Question 19. Click on the correct area most affected by May Thurner syndrome. The answer is right here. This is the left iliac vein. This is the right iliac artery, and this is the vertebral column. So what happens is this vein gets compressed in between this artery and the vertebral column. So right here is the correct answer. So in Maythorner syndrome, the left iliac vein is compressed by the right iliac artery and the vertebral column. Question 20, which of the following is a specific laboratory finding in acute pancreatitis? A, elevated alkaline phosphatase or ALP, B, elevated lipase, C, elevated alanine amino transferase, or ALT, or D, elevated blood urea nitrogen, or BUN, or BUN. The answer is B, elevated lipase. Question 21. This is an image of a normal inferior vena cava in a patient who has a normal central venous pressure. This image was taken during A, expiration, B, inspiration, C, Valsalva maneuver, or D, there's no way to tell. The answer is A, expiration. Question 22. This image was evaluated on a patient who has celiac artery compression syndrome. Which of the following below correctly states what is occurring during the spectral waveform analysis? A, the spectral Doppler is recorded on expiration. B, the spectral Doppler is recorded during normal calm breathing. C, the spectral Doppler is recorded on inspiration. Or D, the spectral Doppler is recorded during the Vasava maneuver.
The answer is C. The spectral Doppler is recorded on inspiration. Question 23. This disease is known to block the ampulla vader, resulting in acute pancreatitis, causing increased serum levels of amylase lipase. What is the disease? A. Cholodocolithiasis. B. Cholangiocarcinoma. C. Biliary ascariasis. Or D. Cholangitis. The answer is C, biliary ascariasis. Question 24. This type of liver mass is a result of A, overgrowth of hepatocytes, B, glycogen storage disease, C, fenestration in the sinusoidal endothelium, or D, beckwith weidemann syndrome. The answer is A, overgrowth of hepatocytes. So this ultrasound represents focal nodular hyperplasia, or FNH. Question 25. This common bile duct measurement most likely suggests A, a hypoplastic common bile duct, B, a normal common bile duct, C, a borderline dilated common bile duct, or D, a dilated common bile duct. So a normal CBD measures anything less than 0.5 centimeters or five millimeters. A CBD starts to become dilated at 0.8 centimeters or eight millimeters. Well, this completes our first 25 questions of this abdominal registry. I'll hurry and write 25 more questions and upload that video as soon as I can. I'm Jim with ultrasoundboardreview.com. Thank you so much for watching.